Every time I surrender, every time I fall, I find grace more precious than I did before. Oh, I'm gonna lay my world down here at your feet. Look to the heavens for all I need. I'm gonna sing.
Jesus in praise. What we're saying is, God, write in on your people's praise the promise that you gave us that you will give us peace beyond understanding, confidence and joy, life beyond what we could ever ask, think, or imagine. God, I need it this morning. I may have been closed off to you this week, but I'm resetting myself, I'm recentering myself, and I'm lifting up the name of Jesus. I'm opening up the windows. I'm letting the lights in. So come on, let's raise our voice. Welcome to Woodland Church. You can be seated. Um, we are so glad you're here. If you're a guest, we just want you to make yourself right at home. And I hope you'll download the Woodland Church app and you'll find out so much more about the church. We want to get to know you. We want you to get to know us. And really, we just want you to be at home in our church family. Hey, this has been one of the greatest summers of life change in the history of Woodland Church. I mean, through our student camps, our children's camps, and then last week at the Woodlands campus, we had over 2,000 children at our vacation Bible school. It was amazing, just watch. We can either choose to build people up or we can choose to tear people down. We wanna build people up, which means that we wanna help others. You see, I wanna challenge you today to build people up because heroes help others. At Woodland Church, we're building children. What we're doing is raising up the next generation to change the world. Hey, it's exciting today. If you notice coming in, we have a movie theme going because we're starting a new series called Summer Blockbusters. We're gonna take some of the biggest movies out there, but more importantly, we're gonna look at God's principles on how you can survive the stress during these really stressful times. How you can experience God's peace and strength in the middle of the stress. And you're in for a real blessing today because my oldest son, Ryan, is gonna be bringing the first message in the series. And he's gonna be Looking at Top Gun Maverick. It is a cool movie and it's awesome, but, um, but more importantly, God's Word is powerful. And really, he's gonna be teaching us from God's Word how to put Christ back in the pilot seat of your life because that makes all the difference when you do that. Now, would you stand as we continue to sing one of our Woodlands Worship originals that God's using Woodlands Worship in our original songs that are going out from our church to make a difference all over the nation, but yet these songs have been written for you to sing to God. It comes through Woodlands Church and then it makes a difference. So let's sing about his great love because he loves you so much. We just ask that you remove distractions in this place right now. We sing out to you. Oh, how I've tasted. 
need your blessings again Here in your presence I call you friend There's more to this life than the breath that I've spent Cause when this story's over another begins That's right so when the world crashes down and all I can do is try not to drown, I look to you, Jesus, and no death can touch me now. I gave you hell, you gave your son, hallelujah, there's nothing I've done to deserve such a savior. Such a father, such a love. We thank you, God.
love for you. He loves you so much wherever you are. You can be seated. Whether you're watching in the balcony or down here or at Tascacita or online, God has a plan and a purpose for you. I'm so glad that I get to be with you. As Pastor Kerry said, I'm his oldest son. It's such an honor. Let me pray for us. Dear Lord, please speak through me. Give us a word that encourages us, that lifts us up and points us back to you. Teach us your truth so that we can apply them and share them with others. And yeah, I pray. Amen. Well, growing up, I have always loved filmmaking. So when my dad told me that he was going to start a new series called Summer Blockbusters, I jumped at the chance. I even did some internships in Los Angeles at different film companies. So I'm passionate about movies, and I'm so excited to be with you today. And this weekend's message, I cannot wait, because it is Top Gun Maverick, and it's going to be such a great... Josh, Josh, hold Josh, on, on. Josh, what, what, are you, what are you guys doing? It's Top Gun, so it's Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins, what? what are you? Yeah, I waited the danger zone. I'm, I'm trying to do the message here. Well, Ryan, we worked really hard on this, okay? Just wait until you hear Take My Breath Away. Okay? All right, what? Okay. All right, Woodlands Worship, you guys. You guys are awesome. He's, he's not wow. feeling it, it's okay. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the... Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, Woodlands Worship, get out of here, you guys. Come on. Woo! Let's give it up for Woodlands Worship. Yes. Hey. Their timing is usually really good. Like I was saying, uh, we're talking about Top Gun Maverick, but we're also going to be learning about Psalm 23 and how we can put God back in the pilot seat of our lives. Over the next three weekends, we're really going to dive deep into Psalm 23, one of the most comforting passages in all of Scripture. Will you please take a moment to stand with me and read aloud this comforting, famous scripture and see how it can touch our lives, see how it applies to us today. Let's read. Speak this out loud with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's Psalm 23. You can be seated. Thanks for reading that with me. I'm so excited to dive into Psalm 23, and I believe God wants to show us something new as a church family. The first thing that God clearly shows me is that he is the good shepherd, and he wants to provide us with three critical promises that I find in Psalm 23, and those are restoration, direction, and protection. The three promises he has for you right away are restoration, direction, and protection. If you want the peace and fulfillment that's promised in Psalm 23, then you must allow him to be the shepherd of your life. You must put him in the pilot seat. And today, I want to show you a practical way that you can put God back in the pilot seat before you leave here today and experience these three blessings to the full extent that God has for us. Now, the first blessing we're going to look at is restoration. Like so many parts of life, there are a lot of things I didn't appreciate that my parents did for me, especially summer vacations. Every summer they would take our family to an awesome place and they'd work really hard to make sure we had time as a family. And now that I'm married with two amazing kids, my wife Sarah and I get to carry on that tradition of running through airports with strollers and praying we get there before we run out of goldfish and trying to break up all the sibling fights that happen along the way. Well, my son Ben is seven now, and my daughter Joanna is five, about to turn six. But at this time, they were toddlers. They were two and three. Ben was only three, Joanna was two. And it was a return flight from Disneyland. Now, getting ready and going to Disneyland is always filled with anticipation and excitement for our family. We've got our matching t-shirts, we've got our bags packed, everything's organized, we are ready to go. And the night before, the kids just can't sleep. We've got a plan for what we're going to eat. We've got a plan for where we're going to go. All the rides we're going to experience. It's a blast. Now, coming back from Disneyland, coming back from the most magical place on earth is always a bit of a challenge. It's always hard to get the kids to leave. Everyone's worn out. 
we're out of money because we've used the last dollar on the last churro. And now, and, and somehow we're always carrying everything on the plane because we couldn't fit all the new junk we got on, into our suitcases. Can you relate to that? So we were trying to get everything going and we were trying to fit in our suitcases and we were trying to make it back. And on this particular return flight, everything was going really smoothly until we got up in the air. So my son, Ben, was sitting with me uh, in the aisle across from Joanna and Sarah. Sarah, were, Sarah and Joanna were sitting in another aisle, so I was responsible for my three-year-old. And the flight was going great. We reached cruising altitude, and the flight attendant started to bring out the snacks and the drinks. Now, in every couple, there's one parent who loves to uh, be responsible, make sure things are organized, make sure everyone has what they need and no one's being hurt or injured, everyone's safe. And there's usually another uh, parent who really enjoys making sure everyone's having a good time. And I'm the parent who likes to give my kids what they want. And um, <laughs> it's caused some friction in our marriage, but we're working through it. And so the current is, so on this particular flight, my daddy, my, my son saw the, saw the juice cart coming down and he said, daddy juice. And uh, without thinking, I, you know, I told the flight attendant, hey, can I get an open cup of orange juice? And so without thinking, I took the cup of orange juice from the flight attendant and had my wife been anywhere nearby, she would have immediately said nope and seeing the consequences that were going to happen inevitably. But she did not witness my innocent request for the orange juice, nor did she notice when I placed it right in front of my toddler on his tray table and turned my attention back to my phone. Well, it was only about 10 seconds later before that cup of orange juice was spilled in my lap. And... um, it was a giant mess and it was a big uh, ordeal. And then I turned to my, my son, Ben, I said, I need a napkin. I, I looked, I said, I need a napkin. I grabbed the napkin and by the time I turned back to my son, uh, he had taken his shirt off somehow. And I was like, what is, <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, be, and he was upset because he was crying, his shirt was off. And he was really upset because the cup of orange juice that was now in my lap, well, he really, really wanted it. And then I tried to get my wife's attention saying, hey, can, can, you, can you help me with this? We've got a situation here. This is not going well. And then Ben's crying kept getting louder and louder. And then in a unique fit of rage that only a toddler can really pull off, Ben proceeded to strip down on the plane until he was butt naked. And the entire plane knew his anguish. He wanted to make sure everyone knew what was going on. Oh, I, finally, I got cleaned up. And I've never been a Top Gun fighter pilot. I've never been through flight school or experience the G-forces of combat and aerial aviation, but I would challenge any Top Gun pilot to try to calm an irate naked toddler at 36,000 feet (laughs) while a plane full of strangers stares at you. Uh, And maybe like me, you have a recent stressful travel experience. This year is proving to be one of the busiest travel years of all time. It's setting records across the board, and we are experiencing delays and frustrations every step of the way. And even though that's a trip I will never forget, it's something that's so important for us to remember, because when you travel with the Shook family, a lot of people think, well, it must be awesome to travel with the Shook family. It's not. It is stressful. (laughs) It is crazy. We always say, uh, never a lot, always a little. And it's always a little bit stressful because with so many kids and grandkids, there is always at least one story like that. You see, we go on vacation to find rest. We go on vacation to find restoration and peace for our souls, thinking that if we travel, we're going to find it. But the reality is with how stressful travel can become, we never find the true restoration that our souls are looking for. No matter where we go, whether it's a foreign city or a nice beach, those are all great but we have not found the restoration, not found the peace that we really need on vacation. Why is that? Well, we've spent the past few years not traveling and we've spent this past few years staying still. And I always thought that if I didn't have anywhere to be, that I would find contentment. But let me tell you, what 2020 taught me more than anything was that being still and being restored are not the same things at all. Even though my body was still during the pandemic, my mind and my soul were more restless than ever. And I felt stressed out. And maybe you can relate to that. And now that the mandates are finally lifted and we're traveling more than ever before, we are just continuing this cycle thinking that we're going to find the restoration we need when we know it's not going to provide the rest that God wants for us. The author of Psalm 23 is King David. And David spent his youth as a shepherd. So he intimately understood both the role of the shepherd and the role of the sheep. He had a full understanding of that. In Psalm 23, he paints a beautiful picture of God as our good shepherd. And if he is the good shepherd, then by extension, that would make you and I the sheep. 
And the reality is sheep are not always the smartest. They're not always the ones that are going to figure out the whole plan, but God knows what to do. Look at what David writes in verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Can I be honest with you? Recently, I've let the anxieties about the world take over my life. I've been worried about my kids. I've been anxious about the economy. I've been upset about the direction of our country. Maybe you can relate to that. These past few months, if I'm honest, I have put news anchors and social media influencers in the pilot seat of my life. And I'm wondering why I'm stressed out, but I think it's pretty clear. Have you found yourself in any kind of doom scroll spiral lately, you know, where you keep swiping through social media thinking that eventually you might come across a post that really refreshes your soul and reignites your passion, but you end up 30 minutes, an hour or two hours later just feeling stressed out, more stressed out than you were before? It happens to all of us. Most of us have just kind of settled into the stressed out version of our lives that we are now existing in, and we've forgotten what it feels like to really be settled, to really be restored, to really experience that peace. And that's not what God wants for us. Looking to the good shepherd doesn't mean that we deny reality. It doesn't mean we pretend that the storms of life don't exist. It means that we acknowledge the storm, we acknowledge the turbulence, but we decide who is going to be in the pilot seat. Because the reality is, is that every one of us in this room and everyone online is either going into, right in the middle of, or coming out of a storm. It is the condition of life. Storms happen. So you have to decide who is going to be flying the plane that you are in. You don't need a vacation to find rest. You don't need a spa day or more PTO. Those things are great. We love taking breaks and they can be helpful. But the true, deep, abiding, lasting, lasting, restoration that we need can only be found when we put the good shepherd in the right place. The good shepherd wants to lead you to a place of restoration, a place of deep and lasting peace that you've never experienced before. That's why what God wants for you is restoration. The next point is restoration. And then after restoration, what God promises us is direction. He promises he will restore us and he promises he will direct us. This is what it says in Psalm 23 is he's going to restore my soul. Now, Here's a story for you that was really encouraging, that really lifted me up, and I think you're going to get a lot out of. In May of this year, -year 39-year-old Darren Harrison was flying home from a fishing trip aboard a single-engine Cessna caravan. Harrison, who is a flooring salesman by trade, found himself in the scariest situation imaginable when the pilot of his small plane suddenly became incoherent and passed out at the controls. The plane began to nosedive. Darren quickly acted reaching over the pilot and pulling up on the steering column so that they could level out the plane and prevent it from crashing into the Atlantic Ocean. After leveling the plane off, Harrison climbed over into the cockpit barefoot and fumbled for the headset to put on, looking for contact with the outside world. Can you imagine how terrifying that moment must have been when you first realized you're at the pilot seat? On that same day, air traffic controller Robert Morgan had just started his lunch break when a colleague called him back to the control tower, telling him they had a serious situation. You see, in addition to his 20 years as an air traffic controller, Captain Robert Morgan was also a certified, a certified flight instructor with over 1,200 flight hours under his belt. He intimately understood both the technical and emotional challenges that Harrison was now facing in the air. Back in the air, Morgan's calm voice came over Harrison's headset. Maintain wings level and just keep flying along the coast, either north or south. I'm trying to locate you. After a few minutes of searching on the radar system, Morgan and his team eventually located Harrison off the coast of Florida. Harrison was instructed then to drop to 5,000 feet. He was pointed towards Palm Beach International, and Morgan began to direct him towards the runway. At each step along the way, Captain Robert Morgan reassured and calmed Harrison. As you get closer to the runway, it's going to keep getting bigger and bigger, he told them. When Harrison reminded him that he had no idea how to stop the plane, no idea how to land, Morgan just kept saying, stay steady, keep wings level, keep going down. Morgan instructed Harrison finally to dump the throttle all the way to the floor, and the wheels of the Cessna finally touched down on the tarmac. Thankfully, everyone involved in that flight arrived safely. If you look at this photo here, you'll see Captain, that's Captain Morgan on the left and, and Harrison, the one he instructed on the right. It's amazing that everyone involved arrived safely. Thanks to Darren Harrison's obedience to Captain Robert Morgan's steady guidance, everyone involved was safe, and the, even the pilot who was incapacitated was rushed to the hospital and survived. 
Maybe you feel like you're in a situation like Darren Harrison today. Maybe you feel totally helpless, unprepared, like you weren't trained for this moment. You have an overwhelming sense of anxiety or fear. God wants to guide you even when you feel totally unprepared. The key to unlocking the restoration that God's promised us in Psalm 23 is found in the second promise of direction. That's why the second thing that God promises is a direction. And so this is what he says. God has a full plan and a blueprint for your life. And he knows what's going to be best for you. He designed you and he knows exactly what you need. He knows every part of you and he knows the world you inhabit. He is the ultimate air traffic controller and he has a complete blueprint for your life. And he wants to guide you to a place of safety, a place of restoration, a place of deep and lasting peace. That's why in verse three, this is what David writes. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God wants to lead you down a path of righteousness and he's gonna do it to glorify his name. He promises to provide you with direction. He promises that he's going to be with you. He's not going to give you the complete plan though. If Morgan had tried to give Harrison the complete plan on how to land the plane as soon as he sat down on the controls, there's no way that plane would have landed safely. It would have been too overwhelming, too confusing for a first time pilot. Instead, what Captain Morgan did was he gave the instructions one step at a time, giving it to him in pieces that Harrison could understand. And God does the same thing for us. He is only going to provide you with the direction you need for the step that you're on. He never provides the full blueprint because he knows we couldn't work with that. Now to experience all the good shepherd has to offer us and to truly follow his guidance, we need to learn how to follow his voice. Do we know how to recognize the good shepherd's voice? Here's a, uh, w- this is what Jesus says in John 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Those are the words of Jesus. My sheep know my voice. Do we know his voice? One of the most important jobs of an air traffic controller is to keep the airwaves clear, to prevent confusion and allow the important messages to come through. We're gonna talk more about how to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life in this series, and I'm excited for that. But I wanna challenge you and encourage you with an important first step. Let's take an inventory of the information clutter in our lives. Let me ask you, who are you following on social media? What are you watching on Netflix? How many text threads do you have going even right now? Most of us simply have too much going on throughout our day to be able to focus on the Good Shepherd's voice. It's being drowned out. I really wanna challenge you here. Take inventory of it and talk to a friend about, or a friend or family member. Have them help you keep accountable. Maybe it's a spouse who can help you stay accountable. It's not, it's so easy to get caught up in the information overload of this world. And so it's so important to be intentional with each other. Now, the third blessing that God promises us after restoration, direction, is protection. God is going to protect us. As I was researching Top Gun Maverick and how they made the film, I learned that they used real Navy pilots and real gunners to make the movie, which was amazing. And then I began to research into the rich history of American aviation power. One Wikipedia article led me to the next, and eventually I came across the B-24 bomb squadrons that flew over occupied Europe during World War II. I was so excited to find out that one of these heroes lives here in Houston. Staff Sergeant Bob Weinert lives here in Houston and volunteers at the Lone Star Flight Museum. He's 97 and he flew 25 combat missions over occupied Europe, taking out strategic targets across Germany, Italy, and Austria. This week, I had the immense honor of sitting down with Captain Weiner, Sergeant Weiner, and talk with him about his experience. I was also able to thank him on behalf of our church family for his sacrifice. Just watch. The Army Air Corps had a program called the Air Cadet Program. And what it was meant for was you could become a pilot. Uh, and I said, oh, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. But unfortunately, I failed depth perception. So I was assigned to a B-24 bomber as a top turret gunner. In a bomb group were 28 aircraft made up of four squadrons of seven planes each. So that meant 280 men would be on a particular flight or a, a bombing mission. Now, when we formed our crew, every one of us was either 18 or 19 years old. So uh, 
The oldest guy on the crew was the pilot. We used to call him Dad. Uh, he was 22 years old, so it seemed like a very young war. Well, it was kind of an experience to be with a crew in, a, in, a, uh, in an aircraft. Now, to make a mission into Germany would be a, probably an eight and a half hour, maybe could be as much as 10, 10 hour mission. Uh, depending on uh, exactly where you were going. On a mission, the pilot would check in with all the crew about every five, six minutes to make sure that they're uh, able and that they're getting enough oxygen and they're warm enough and so on and so forth. So he would check through the plane. You would say, top okay, and then go right, to, right around every, every position. My particular air cover at that time was the Tuskegee Airmen. I could possibly owe my life to B-51 pilots in the Tuskegee Airmen. A crew gets very together. You're almost like brothers because you live together seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The average life of a crew in those days, your tour of duty, in 1942 and 43 was 25 missions. If you could finish 25 missions, you could go home. But the average life of a crew in those days was eight to 12 missions. So if someone asked, uh, how long do you think it's gonna take me to finish my tour of duty? You would almost tell them, kid, you ain't gonna make it uh, unless you're awful lucky. So that's how bad, dire things were. And God was part of me during the Second World War. I, I've always said there's, there cannot be any, any such thing as an atheist when there's somebody with intent to kill a shooting at him. And I think maybe we don't think about God, somebody bigger than ourselves, somebody that can bring us together you always knew that he was there by your side. I always ask him, uh, when I talk to him every day, I say, why are you keeping me around? So I'm 97 years old, I got achy knees, I got all kinds of aches and pains, I have hearing problems. Uh, and I figure one of the reasons is, is the time I spend at the museum. The reason I'm a volunteer at the museum is to keep the memories alive of those from the Second World War. And I'm glad to see it carrying on through memory. Sergeant Weiner really was an amazing hero. He still is, and you would have loved to meet him. He would have really liked everyone here and just resonated with them. What's amazing is that he told me at 97, he's still totally self-sufficient, drives himself around, and he enjoys driving his Corvette. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason we called him the greatest generation, because he was incredible. I learned so many lessons from him in our time together, so many great biblical truths, but also practical life lessons. And one of the things he kept coming back to was protection. That's why the third thing I want to talk about is protection, how God wants to protect you. In verse 4, David writes this, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What a comforting verse. God doesn't promise us the journey will be easy. He doesn't promise us that the challenges we face won't be overwhelming at times. He knows that they will be. He doesn't say, though I walk through the mountaintop of success and fame and enjoyment, no, he says, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death. And at one point or another, each one of us will walk through life's deep, dark valleys. But he tells you right here that even in the darkest moment, that he is going to be right there with you. And as Sergeant Weinert so beautifully put it, even at the end of life, God is there with us, holding our hand. You may not always feel safe. You may not always feel secure. 
But when you have Jesus Christ as your assurance, you know that he will protect you all the days of your life. He promises us to do that. He promises he will be with you. And even at the end of life, we will have the certainty of heaven one day, and we have the promise of a future with him. Now, the promises of Psalm 23 are comforting, and they truly can change our lives and strengthen our souls. So the question is, why aren't we experiencing them on a daily basis? How do we really put them into practice? I don't mean just feel good about God or pretend things are okay. How do we truly experience the deep and lasting direction, protection, and restoration that God has promised us here in Psalm 23? God offers you the life of peace. He extends the opportunity for blessing. He extends the opportunity for protection and restoration, but he does not force us to take it. To experience these promises, we have to realize that it's our job to let the good shepherd take control. We have to allow the good shepherd to lead us. We need to put Jesus back in the pilot seat. So let me ask you, what's keeping you from giving the controls over to God today? We all have something we're holding on to. What's preventing you from letting go and truly resting in the good shepherd's arms right now? A few weeks ago, I was having coffee with my good friend and the dean of our Woodland Seminary, Shaloxel Johansson. Now, Shell has been a pastor for several decades. He has so much experience and a lot of wisdom, but I told Shell, I'm stressed out, I'm overwhelmed, I feel burnt out. I know that God's promised me his blessings. I know he's promised me his peace, but I don't feel it right now. Shell, what do you do when you reach that place? Shell gave me some great advice. It was powerful and simple, and I hope it applies to you as well. What he said to me was this. When I feel overwhelmed, I just look at a picture of our galaxy, and I look at the small dot that is Earth, and I am reminded of just how big my God is and how small my problems are. Could it be that the main reason you're not experiencing the peace that, God, that God's promised you in Psalm 23 is it because you've allowed your problems to get too big and your God to become too small? To better understand and really appreciate the Good Shepherd, we have to realize just how big he is. We need to remember how big God is. This month, NASA released the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. The Webb Space Telescope is the most advanced piece of imaging technology mankind has ever produced, and it's allowed us to see further into the cosmos than ever before, revealing new galaxies. Here's one of the first full-color photos released by the Webb Telescope. What's amazing about this is it's a, it's a deep cluster of stars and galaxies. Each one of these dots of light is a galaxy, and it looks massive to us when looked at from the Webb telescope. But when looked at from the night sky uh, from Earth with, with no telescope, it would be about the size of a, a grain of rice held at arm's length if you stand on Earth. That's about how big this image is if you were standing on Earth. And what's amazing is that when you avert, observe this with the Webb telescope, this tiny sliver of night sky, it reveals these countless galaxies. And it reveals that each of these galaxies has countless planets and stars inside of them. You see, there really is no such thing as empty night sky. There's only our limited ability to perceive God's vast creation. When we look up in the night sky, can you imagine if you could see everything that God's created? It would be overwhelming. What's even more remarkable to me than God's vastness and how big he is, is how much he truly cares. God has a desire for intim intimacy with you and I. The creator of the universe cares for you and he knows every detail of your life. We, we have to remember not just how big God is, we have to remember how much God cares. He truly cares about you. The one who put the galaxies in place and hung every star in our night sky, the God who oversees every turn of our planet, invites you and I to live forever with him, and he invites you and I into relationship with him. Later in Psalm 23, verse 6, David ends this chapter with a comforting message. This is what he says. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just over 2,000 years ago, God became a man. He lived an amazing, perfect life. He shared his message of truth, and he sacrificed himself on a cross to die for your sins so you could live in eternity with him. This man is named Jesus Christ, and whether you've known Jesus for many years or this is your first time to truly consider a relationship with Christ, I want you to know that God put you here for a unique reason. He has a unique plan and blueprint for your life. He knit you together in your mother's womb, and even though he knows 
every detail of your life and he created the universe. He still loves you exactly as you are, every flaw, every mistake. And if you haven't invited Jesus to be the good shepherd of your life, I wanna give you that opportunity right now before we end this message. We're about to wrap up. Before we do, I wanna make sure you have this opportunity. And I wanna encourage you, even if you already have a relationship with our good shepherd, will you speak this out loud? It can be such a powerful act to put God back in the pilot seat where he belongs. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I admit my sin separates me from you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my sins. Please come into my life and be my good shepherd. I put you on the pilot seat of my life. And you know I pray. Amen.